This video is sponsored by Cardo Systems. In today's video, we're going to be bringing our Chinese mini jeep and the Chinese ATV to the remote backcountry of Colorado, where we're going to be giving each a series of tests such as rock crawling, hill climbing, handling, and much more to see if they can stand up to the unforgiving Rocky Mountain terrain. This series is the grand finale of testing the ATV and the mini jeep, so I promise you'll want to stick around and watch. Oh, and since both vehicles are almost completely stock, I'm sort of hoping you can imagine what my back is about to go through. My goodness, wow, that is a lot of bumps. But for everything to make sense, let's jump right back to the beginning and work our way through the trip. I promise it was quite the adventure. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we got the mini Jeep and the ATV and we're gonna be doing the ultimate off-road test in Crested Butte on the back roads. This is gonna be a super epic video. And as you can see here, we got everything ready and we're gonna put it on the trailer. Let's get into it. Whoa, 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 hold on just a minute. You see, I'm thinking two steps ahead. Since I already knew that bringing two Chinese toys bought off Amazon, to the Crested Butte backcountry without testing them just to make sure is most likely a risky move on my part. So we're gonna do a quick test. If they break down, they'll break down here and not in Crested Butte. I think it's a smart idea, right? Right, Ryan? This is questionable. So I went out and tested the ATV just to make sure everything was working. Huh? By the way, I took out the throttle limiter so that during the trip, you guys can see what it looks like at full range. Oh my gosh! You almost hit me, dude. What the heck? No, oh, I didn't hit you. And after almost running my brother over, we went and did the same thing with the mini jeep. So with all the testing aside, it was now time to load things up. So we just got the ATV on successfully with no problems. That was and actually quite easy. Yeah. I'm surprised. Well guys, I'm so sorry to break it to you, but the spare tire in the jerry can will not be making it on the trip. You see, if my dad chose to step out on bravery and buy the six foot bed instead of the five foot one, they might have tagged along. And last but not least, we loaded up the mini Jeep. And yes, I forgot to take off the parking brake, which, just like the ATV, only partially works. Now that we loaded up the $1,800 ATV and the 125cc mini jeep that's too small for me, I went and packed up my extremely obese backpack. And after finding out that my camera gear will be squished to death for the whole trip and sticking some very important information on the back, it was finally time to begin the journey. Well... I think we're ready. So we just made it to the condo and we have Sterling and then we have Berenger who just disappeared. <laughs> right but these guys are going to be here on the trip with us and they're going to help us destroy the mini jeep. If you guys are unfamiliar, these guys helped us build our epic snow cave back in March. Do you have anything to say about this idea? It's good. We really? Should, we should make Whoa. a bonus seat no. back here, so that way somebody falls off. Okay, so you know, like we, need, we need like one of those jump seats like yeah. they've got in the, in the real Jeeps. Yep. Wait, okay, but this is a real now, Jeep. Now, he is going to get pushed out, and he's going to be the cameraman. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's true. Ah! So we had some altitude okay. problems like with the carburetor, but I think we sorted it out because it now idles. Foreshadowing. 
oh, you better mean it when I say foreshadowing, because this was definitely massively foreshadowing something. Now back to the video where we found a couple of opportunities to perform some practice tests. So we're going to do a quick test by exceeding the maximum load capacity, which I'm pretty sure looks something like this. Ah. Ah. This is sketchy. This is sketchy. Here, put, put your hand. Put your hand on this. Can you hold this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I Just a minute ago, the suspension started making some very odd noises that I was not exactly proud of. Oh well, let's just forget about it. After we finished driving like maniacs, we decided to call it a day. But that night, we received one of the biggest rainstorms I think I've ever seen there at the condo, which meant huge puddles for us. More specifically, one giant puddle. I think you can guess what we did next. We're gonna get sprayed if we stand here. Maybe. Here they come. Oh, come on, that was not full speed. That wasn't even full speed. So after some advice from my brother, I decided to give it another try. I, I just don't know what to say about the poor Jeep. I don't think it's gonna make it. Nope. How much do you bet that Ryan or Behringer is gonna break oh. the mini Jeep? 100 bucks. 100 bucks. You better pay up. Oh boy. The audience, you have to I pay up I am not too. gonna bet anything because I know that they are going to wreck it. So, yeah. So for those of you wondering why we haven't showed much on the ATV yet, it was because the condo didn't like having ATVs around, but that didn't catch me by surprise. What caught my attention was something completely different. They said the mini jeep was fine to drive as it was more of a toy, which of course, we'll be trying to prove them wrong. And with Futuro and sitting here at his editing desk, he can reassure you that we did that quite well, which you'll be seeing soon. But as for the ATV, we did run it just to make sure it was properly adjusted for the high altitude and it did fine. So after our friends agreed to help, we spent the first few days of our trip doing absolutely silly things that virtually have nothing to do with this video. To satisfy your curiosity, these pictures serve as the best possible recap. And when the day finally came for us to start the expedition, they left. So with my brother and I remaining to perform the testing, we can now fast forward to the trails. So here we are guys, we are finally at the trailhead. And so basically right here, this is our quote base camp and there are two mountains. And I'm gonna explain that in just a minute, but I wanna show you guys a little bit of our setup. So Ryan's gonna be on the ATV and I'm gonna be in the mini Jeep. So before we came here, we took the uh, ATV and the mini Jeep on, let's just call it a test run. Uh, with our buddies and we just went over a little mountain road nothing too crazy it was all downhill so during the little outing we did have a few little mishaps like the uh, ATV had something fall off and the same thing with the mini jeep if you look under the ATV you see we've got no tail light and uh, yeah it just fell off so nothing too crazy uh, on the mini jeep something I got to note and remember is that the ECU the control box completely uh, fell off and the bolts are no longer um, usable so it can't be put back on. So if we were to go through a big puddle, uh, the motor's fried. So that will add to the adventure for sure. So today's video is gonna be split into two segments. We've got the easier segment, not the easy segment, the easier segment. And then we've got the harder segment, which is gonna be across the street. And as you should see, it goes up that road. So, the easy segment has rocks, it's got puddles, it's got steep climbs, and then the other one, it's got steeper climbs, more rocks, and deeper puddles. So we're gonna start out with the easier segment, and then we're gonna move on over to the tougher one, which is across the street. Well, I think we're ready. Let's begin.
what we would do is put both vehicles up against each other and see who would win certain challenges. But since we don't really know the trail that well, let alone know if either vehicle will even survive, instead we will be seeing how they perform just by progressing our way up the mountain. Coming up shortly, we're about to hit our first water puddles. Well, we got some water puddles, tiny ones. So far, both vehicles have managed to make it through the puddles, but to your surprise, those were only teasers to what's coming up soon. Currently, we're about 200 vertical feet above our original starting point, with the entire mountain making up 650 feet of total elevation change. We still have quite a distance to go. The whole entire mini jeep is like caked in water now. This will be nice. And I've got wet shoes. I was actually thinking I would not get wet shoes, but uh, could have come up through that hole. Could have come up to through here. Yeah, look at that. All over the place. Ahead of us is a massive hill that makes up for nearly 200 feet of the climb. Let's see how the two vehicles handle it. so far so good until it didn't go so good as the mini jeep began to die ha huh, i've got low gear take that you stupid mountain Now you may be thinking that the ATV should be able to beat out the mini jeep in every obstacle, right? Wrong. Let me get something straight. The mini jeep uses a 3 speed semi-automatic transmission, which means I have more control over the engine. On the other hand, the ATV uses a continuously variable transmission, which is basically a belt drive. On most ATVs, a CVT is fine, but in some cases, it can be a fragile little thing. If you happen to get it wet, or if you overheat it by climbing a hill for too long, it could burn out, and your ATV would be toast. Well, its rubber band would be toasted. Long story short, the ATV might have an extremely severe weak point if we happen to mess up its transmission. We drove on for a while, but there wasn't too much to report. We did see some cows. Hello, cows. 
and then we found our first large size puddle. Oh my goodness. Look at that puddle. Now it's my turn. honest I didn't even think I would make it. So far the mini jeep has really surprised me with how capable it's showing to be. And don't forget it's almost completely in stock form. The ATV has done pretty well too. And finally after 650 feet of climbing we have reached the top of our mountain. Well that was not too bad. Uh, we definitely caked the mini jeep with mud and it's completely soaked i'm gonna have to check that ecu box but well there you go guys we are at the top of the first phase of our testing uh, the mini jeep is pretty awesome at high rpms the engine uh, sputters less and at low rpms it kind of has trouble running and i'm pretty sure that's the carburetor um, i do have an idea on my sleeve for the future to possibly fix that uh, Ryan, tell me how the ATV was. Uh, it goes through puddles really well. This thing is like a rock crawler with these the shocks. Well, it handles great. Um, the steering is really, really good on it. And, uh, yeah. Pretty it's awesome. Like I'm being interviewed. It seems like the ATV, um, you know, it does have more power. It's a 177 compared to a 125, so clearly there's more power there, but the big tires help it over rocks faster, but... The mini jeep is actually pretty good now the next phase is going to be much tougher and you guys are going to see that in a minute all right so now it's time for the fun part ryan you ready so the whole time my brother and i have been out here riding we've been using this super cool device for communication it's called the pack talk outdoor by carter systems Pack Talk Outdoor is the ultimate sports communicator. It operates using Bluetooth, which allows it to function without the need for Wi-Fi or cellular connections. This way, you and your buddies can stay connected no matter where the adventure brings you. Let's take a look. Inside the box, you'll find your Pack Talk unit and below that are some instruction booklets. And at the bottom of the box, you'll see your charger, some accessories, and your premium JBL audio speakers. The clip-on attachments have an adhesive sticker to grab onto your helmet, making installation a breeze. Operation is super easy. Just hold down to turn on the unit and it'll automatically pair using Bluetooth. When you're ready to talk, there's no need to push buttons as the device is voice activated. By using these devices, my brother and I have been able to communicate so we always know if and when there's an obstacle. And for your peace of mind, you get a free two year warranty that comes with each unit you buy. For 20 years, Cardo Systems has proudly served motorcyclists, skiers, mountain bikers, rock climbers, and many others. Go down to the description below to get yours today. After spending some time at the top of the mountain, we began the ride back down. We went back through the giant water puddle and then met up with the cows again. <laughs> After going through the puddle for the second time, I think it was safe to say that some water got into the air filter, because now the mini jeep started to sputter and kept wanting to die. Once again, we'll just forget about it like we did with the squeaky shocks. It'll be fine, right? Although we were surrounded by vast, rolling hills, there were actually gigantic 14ers all around us. It was hard to see them from where we were, but I promise they were there. Along the way back, we saw a couple people wave at us. This one guy in particular even cheered us on. Thank you! And just like that, we made it back to the bottom, surprisingly in one piece. 
And we have our auto turn off technology. It's called a carburetor that's unhappy with the altitude. It turns off automatically for you. So here we are back at the bottom. Uh, it really was not too, too bad. Uh, there were some pretty good hills and climbs and some fun little puddles that you guys saw. So the mini Jeep does need probably some good suspension upgrades um, because those shock absorbers are really not liking the rocks and stuff that we're dealing with here. The ATV, on the other hand, the ATV has these reservoir shocks in the front. So these shock absorbers, they run nitrous oxide and you can tune it to the type of riding you're doing and they just make the overall ride quality feel way better. It's getting a little bright here in the sun and the angles, but we are now at the camp again and we're refilling on gas and getting snacks and checking out our video footage. So now we're gonna go up to the higher trail. And like I said before, this trail has more rocks, deeper puddles and bigger hills. And it's definitely gonna be quite the challenge for the little mini Jeep. So that's gonna be the final challenge. So let's get to it. Well, here goes the second part. I'm not very uh, enthusiastic about this because I've heard there's some rocks. So we're gonna find some rocks probably. Let's see what that means. by finding some rocks, we absolutely did. And this was just the start of it. So now I know what they mean by there's rocks up on this one. Like that wasn't enough, we rounded the corner to find another rock garden, but this time on a hill. Of course, the GoPro had to do its thing and make it look like flat ground. This angle portrays it a little better. Determined to get past the rocks, we pushed on at a horribly slow pace, but the rocks just kept going on and on and on. It was at this point that we began to run into some issues. You know the bar that sits underneath an ATV designed to protect the chain? Yeah, well, let's just say it got used. Whoa! Whoa, 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 stop, stop. Oh no, that's stop. All right, let's see. Go, go, go. And it was just then that I had a very strange realization moment. You see, if my brother gets stuck on that rock, why would I try to do the same thing? If the ATV won't do it, then the Jeep will not do it for sure. So yeah, on those rocks, there's just so little damping. It's just very rough to get traction and control. Uh, I mean, these, these are not special ones. 
They're just facing sharks. Oh my gosh. Wow. My shoes are wet now. Basically these shock absorbers, they're doing the best they can, but they are really at their limit right now. And yeah. Now we did leave the rocks behind, but what's coming up next has the potential to completely destroy the mini jeep's engine. Say hello to the deepest water puddle on the entire trip. You'll know which one it is when you see it. Oh my gosh. I got it, I got it. Uh, that yeah, that's not a very good thing. Oh man, wow! I feel like I went for a swim with my clothes on, and there goes Ryan. So, well, that's not too good. Um, time to investigate. What happened? I think I fried it. How do the electrics look? Uh, they don't look awful. Um, they are a little bit wet though. Oh yeah. So, so after giving the mini jeep a couple minute break, we tried to start it up. Somehow out of the blue, it seemed to have completely revived right. itself. Okay, well, yeah. alrighty. Okay, that was scary for a second. I thought we were going to be stranded and have to leave Willie out here. Unfortunately, we had to make the decision to turn around. I really didn't trust the reliability of the mini jeep's engine, especially after going through that puddle. Alrighty. It's definitely sputtering a bit, but I think we're going to make it. I'm just going to turn around right here. Okay. And it dies. So now let's just back up. And try not to fall off the mountain. And then start it back up again. Put it in gear. And then hopefully we can turn around without dying. And since I didn't die, I can now proceed to almost die on all the rocks that we have to go over again. And just as much as you guys, I would have loved to see what was at the end of the trail, as I was quite certain that the rocky portion was over. But knowing that the electronics were somewhat wet, I really didn't want to risk it and have to push it back down. So with the mini jeep seeming to be running okay, we started the journey back. But the mini jeep began to show that it was not completely fine, as it kept dying and making an odd noise. It almost sounded like the piston scraping inside the cylinder. Oh, come on. But in spite of all that, eventually me, the mini jeep, and my incredibly sore back finally managed to limp our ways back to the bottom. We then loaded up the filthy mini jeep then did the same with the absolutely mud-stained ATV. At the end of the day, every bone in my back was so sore that it hurt to stand up. Even sitting in the truck was a thousand times more comfortable than riding in the Jeep. One way or another, it was a trip that I won't be forgetting anytime soon. But for this trip, this is where the adventure comes to an end. Well guys, pretty awesome little series. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. For those of you wondering, we did wash the mini Jeep and the ATV and they look good as new. They actually look as if they almost never went on the trip. That is until you go over and like try to shake the mini Jeep's suspension, then you'll notice that we, we clapped it out a little bit. But as far as both vehicles performing, the mini Jeep just completely blew me away with how it, how it went over those hills and those rocks and the puddles and all that stuff. Absolutely crazy.
And for the ATV, it didn't seem like we ever had any issues with the CVT like I thought we would. It just seemed to keep itself dry throughout the whole trip. So thankfully all that's good. But that situation at the end with the mini Jeep and the odd motor noises or whatever at the end of the video, um, I did hop in the mini Jeep and drove it around a little bit and it just fixed itself. So big thanks to the mini Jeep for not giving me another thing to add to my to-do list. If you guys would possibly like to help me fund some of these uh, modifications and ridiculous things that we want to do with the mini Jeep, um, there's a little button down below called Super Thanks, and you can just give whatever amount you feel like you want to give. Once again, guys, I just want to thank you so much for 2,000 subscribers. It just means so much to me. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one.